All right. So my name is Owen Jordan. I am a junior at State State Environmental Sciences. Too soon. Too soon. Um, I'm the founder and director of Get. I'm like saying founder. It seems so. I'm the director of giving at Rescue Apparel, and basically what we're about is with every purchase you make, 25% goes <coughs> to loving and nurturing orphans global. Um, we do that through. You can scroll down a little bit now. <laughs> but it's through a nonprofit called Loving Orphans Global. The story behind all this really. A, a really long story. For six years, I've always wanted to start something like Tom Shoes ever since I heard of it because I always believed that giving was over here and making money was over here. You could never have them together. It was just impossible. And if you did that, it was like voodoo magic and you needed to be burned at a stake. But not really. <laughs> but when I saw that commercial, I blamed my Costco on AT&T. Anybody seen that commercial where he's walking on the beach and talking about how, you know, for every shoe you buy, a shoe is donate to a child in need overseas, you know, that really sparked an inter interest in me. And for six years, I'd always had this, I had the why and the how, but I never had the passion for the who. I did not know who it was I wanted to serve. Um, so spring semester, actually, last year, um, I was leaving Fountain Dining Hall. Oh, I was at Fountain Dining Hall. Why do you know about Fountain Dining Hall? It's disgusting. <laughs> and I was walking back to my dorm, and a friend of mine had told me that a friend, two friends of his from California who started a nonprofit called Loving Orphans Global were coming to talk and share their story. And so I went to it, you know, I had nothing else to do but accounting homework. And I went there, and he told me about how this guy right here, he's going a little more, his name is Richard Lawson. Notice that Lawson mustache. <laughs> he goes by <laughs> He goes by Chardo, I call him Chardo, and he was telling a story about how he was in California, uh, Carlsbad, California, he was an accountant and he was engaged and he was really good at skateboarding, so he felt this calling from the Lord saying, you know, give up everything you have, drop your accounting job, you know, drop it. Fiance, sell everything you have. Yes, yes, yes. Everything. And pursue orphans around the world. And you know, at first he was kind of like, oh, maybe. And you know, he, he took some faith. He sold all his stuff, his cars. You know, he dropped his accounting job, dropped his fiance. They're still friends now. And pursue orphans in Bali, Indonesia. And I'll show you some pictures of them further down. Um, and to, yeah, I'll, I'll name them later. I'll show them later. <laughs> but uh, so, and I hear in the story, I was like, "Oh my gosh, what is this man thinking of?" And you know, he, he travels the world, and he literally says that his 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 bank account has never dropped to zero. All the money that has been given to him and sponsored, people who sponsored him, has gone into loving orphans around the world. And that goes into you know, or about it. Twenty five percent of our profit goes for rescuing and nurturing orphans. Nurturing to me is a very important word. It's not just here's some food, go play. Nurturing is they build sustainable orphanages. It's the same in Uganda. They should not have got back to Uganda. They're planning on building a school there. Nurturing is rescuing, feeding, clothing, bathing, playing, educating, and I say playing and having fun. That's very important too. You know, and that really inspired me. So this summer, I counseled at a camp to learn about these about kids in the USA because I said, you know, I'm not. I can't be passionate about something that I don't know anything about. Although I have two younger sisters around. I usually think they're about Justin Bieber and Goldfish. <laughs> After working at this summer with kids, they are so much more than that. They are about love. You know, they, they, they are people. They're small people, <laughs> but they have minds. They have stories. And they have needs. We literally fed them three times a day. We made sure they took showers. We made sure they put on bug spray. You know, we even raged with them on the last day of camp. Fueled by caffeine and candy. <laughs> sure. It's really fun. Um, so that's what really inspired Rescue Apparel. Uh, go back up a little bit. I'm really working today. Um, the five tenets for Rescue Apparel uh, on the business side is giving. Uh, giving 25% of our profit, you know, 25% out of 100 is one fourth. So one fourth of that money goes to the for giving, and it goes in two ways, one of two ways. Either we use that money to have a rummage sale to match whatever amount we raise. And then we go into the town where the orphanages are and we go grocery shopping in the local community and we bring the food and the toys to the actual orphanages. Or if 
that doesn't work out because of international laws and we give the money directly to loving orphans for the whole um, this is my favorite one I call it frugal sus business it's frugal bootstrap sustainable business has anybody read start something that matters by Blake Mikoski yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk huh we'll believe you okay well Blake Mikoski talks about how bootstrapping and uh, being frugal and sustainable is very important to a startup business because if you don't have enough money, what are you going to do? College, we are all about bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is making something out of literally nothing. For instance, something we plan to do is local ad and PR. Since this is, is a clothing company, we plan on doing ad and PR through packed fashion, you know, the local newspaper, our school, and the technician. Two of my good friends are actually the editor of the book, which is good. Um, Simple design. Right now, we're just screen printing T-shirts and um, jacks and things like that. As we grow more, I would love to shop for manufacturers to make BNX and kind of like Cali style Henleys and you know just anything. Um, Stimulate. That's another. That's a favorite of mine. Um, we are really into stimulating the local economy of college students because in college, it's so hard paying for. For tuition. I feel like tuition goes up every month. And um, there are a lot of talented students at our school. One, student, one friend of mine who is a visual arts major, she makes these ear wooden earrings, these headbands, and she uh, sold them last semester to raise money to go on a summer project in California. So I'm working with her to see if we can actually put that in the catalog and work with other students around campus who have like specialty products. Um, youth involvement, internships, paid internships. When I say paid, I mean by, yeah, I said paid. I mean, when I say paid, I mean this, the second most important currency, and that is food and fun. So you'll be paid with food and fun. <laughs> That's what I mean by paid for right now. Um, I, when I look through my friend list, I literally, about 80% of my friends are marketing majors, textile majors, and design majors, and I'm good friends with all of them. And I want to be able to utilize them and help build their resumes. Um, that goes back to stimulating. If you work with us, you will be bragged about. You will be bragged about at all times. My uncle is actually be is a so the social entrepreneurship consultant in Maryland. He owns a, a company called Campaign Consultation. Consultation I've heard of. They do work with the White House and uh, local governments in like Alaska. You know, re, like rebuilding communities, and they do stuff like that. Um, trust. This is another one by Blake Mikowski. I want customers, employees to be able to trust what we do. You know, that goes back to why am I doing this? I don't want to say, okay, yeah, you know, we're um, saving puppies because puppies are cute, and that's it. No, I want to be about something. That's kids. I go back to saying, when I look at my sisters and me at my house, you know, we always ask my parents, what's for dinner? What's for dinner? Never we ask, are we having dinner tonight? And there are so many children in the world who ask that question. Um, so we'll go up. I'll, I'll be finished. I'm sorry. I'm taking forever. I'll show you some of the kids that we serve. This? Oh, good. <laughs> I always forget their names. We'll go to the next one. Okay. We'll go to the next one. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> we'll call them Tim and Chemo. No, not Chemo. That sounds horrible. Tim and Bobby. <laughs> Tim and Bobby. To be honest, you can't really release their real names because for security reasons. These are two orphans in Bali, Indonesia that um, Charto actually works with. And, you know, they, uh, okay, we'll go to the next kid. This is Bayou. Bayou. That's his real name, actually. You can't tell anybody. His name is Bayou. This is him on his way to school in Bali, Indonesia. Go down. She's my favorite. She's my screensaver. This is Esther. She is from Haiti. And actually, I am planning on going with Log and in December to go teach her and the orphans there how to speak English. Because English is like the first step through the door into the real world. You know, they live in this world in an orphanage where they're being loved, but out there in the real world they need to have tools which which is gonna be language English. So that's Esther, she is adorable. That's some other kids, I don't know the names, let's keep going. <laughs> this is Timo. Timo is a very I that guy's a boss. This is Timo. Good story about him. Timo was actually a street orphan. You know, some of the orphans in these orphans, some of them are street orphans, some of them are their family say, hey, we can't, we cannot take care of them, so please take over and watch over. 
Timo actually used to live with street dogs and eat with them. He had a really bad ear infection to the point where he went deaf in one ear. They brought him into the orphanage in Bali, Indonesia, and they gave him medicine. They educated him. He's the most joyous child there. Keep going. <laughs> we'll call him Brian. Brian. Brian is a load of fun. He, he's got a lot of personality. Keep going. And there he is again. So that's what Rescue of Peril is about. We're about giving Frugu Sus business, Frugal Bootstrap Sustainable business, uh, youth involvement, which is enriching Raleigh, enriching you know, people around us who are involved, and trust.